Thank you. Uh, can we have slides there? Okay, thank you. Uh, so, good morning. Good morning. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. I am Andrei, Andrew, from Estonia, and today I'm going to introduce you the Selenite, uh, open source uh, library for automation testing, for testing automation. Uh, uh, just in case, I came from Estonia. Estonia is here. <laughs> and Estonia is known, I hope, as a homeland of a uh, few uh, startups like Skype, uh, JRebel, TransferWise, PipeDrive, Import2, Fortumo, and Selenite. So I'm going to introduce you Selenite. You will like it. Uh, so what is Selenite? Selenite is free open source uh, library for writing UI tests in Java. It uh, brings concise API for writing readable tests, and it allows you to write writing stable tests. How it does, I will show. I will demonstrate. Uh, and what is also good with Selenite that you can, with Selenite you can just forget all these typical problems of UI tests, like a lot of boilerplate code, uh, like uh, all these timing Ajax problems, timing issues, timeouts. Uh, you don't have to think about how to make a screenshot at which moment and how to store it. And surprise, surprise, you can forget about stale element exception, finally. Actually, it, this, there is no magic. I will tell uh, how Selenite does it does this magic. So the main point is that thanks to Selenite, you, can, you can't forget about all these technical details, typical problems, and can concentrate on business logic. For me, this is a huge pros. Uh, and so what's, what is the difference? Why do we have so much typical problems, Ajax problems, and so on? Because most of us do use automated test with Selenium, but as you know, Selenium actually is not a library for testing. Selenium is an instrument for driving browser. In other words, it's quite a low level instrument, low level protocol. And Selenite is built on top of Selenium, but it is library specifically for testing. In other words, it, it's high level library. It's created specifically for good tests. Let's see it. So let's see what means concise API. This is how the, a simple test looks like uh, using Selenite. To open a browser, we just need to write open. Surprise, surprise, very easy. Do not, do not need to bother with web driver, how to close it, how to start it, how initialize it. It's, it's all it's just implemented. So uh, to find the first element, we just uh, Using the dollar command, we just find an element uh, by name, by whatever, and uh, set value for this element. Uh, then we can just click this element, and uh, uh, at the end, we, we need to uh, check that the result is expected. For this purpose, Selenite provides uh, quite a lot of methods, like should have text, should have uh, property, and so on. We will see it later. Uh, what is good about Selenite? It's not like just a syntax sugar, as many of uh, you probably think. Actually, Selenite is created to save your time. How? Uh, I believe uh, that time is actually divided uh, like this. Uh, you spend to writing code or writing test, I guess, like about 20% of your time. And they spend for debugging, for reading code, for finding uh, errors, probably about 80% of, of your time. I guess it's like, I guess. And uh, using, uh, thanks to Concise API, Selenite uh, allows you to, less, to spend less time for writing and it also uh, allows you to spend less time for debugging thanks to smart weightings. I will show it, what it means. So 
let's see what, what, what are Selenite goodies. What can it do for you? First of all, the number one feature is smart weightings. What it means? Uh, Selenite provides a lot of methods like should be visible uh, or should have text, some text, uh, or should not be visible, should not have text, and so on. And the main point is that all these methods can wait if needed. It's, it just, uh, it's, it's very easy, but a uh, very st stable way to resolve automatically all these timing Ajax issues. Uh, so, once more, if when you write some element should be visible, Selenite checks if it's visible, and if it's not visible yet, Selenite will wait a little bit, more a little bit, more a little bit, and by default up to four seconds. Uh, of course, this timeout can be configured and you can set any other timeout. It's just brilliant. I just, I just like this idea how Selenite resolves IX issues automatically. Uh, if, if I can make a little overview about uh, how typically this problem is resolved, S Selenium web drivers uh, provides two solutions for this problem. One, the first one is implicit weight. Probably you, you know what it is, I hope. And another one is fluent weights. And Selenite provides a third way, should be visible. Uh, I think, personally, that implicit weight is just bad. It, it's not sufficient. It can wait that element appears in a few seconds, but it cannot wait, for example, that element disappeared in a few seconds, or element has changed his state. So, implicit weight does just is not sufficient. The fluent weight is better, actually it resolves these problems, but it's verbose. You just need to write so many lines of code and you need to sync every time. What numbers, what timeouts and so on uh, should I write there? And uh, the Selenite uh, approach is just perfect. It just works, it's very simple. I do, you do not need, need to sync every time. It just works in the background, you know. Uh, I, I can uh, demonstrate it. Uh, let me uh, run Google tests. Uh, let's look how uh, let's look how the simple uh, test for logging in into Gmail account looks like. We find the uh, username field, set value or val, and press enter. You find the password field, set value, you, and you click button sign in. Probably you know that Gmail is quite slow. Gmail uh, inbox opens in probably 10 or 15 seconds and, uh, and it's rendered by Ajax. And uh, I'm just demonstrating that Selenite can resolve these issues easily. As you see, we didn't need to write any weights, any cycles, any loops, any, anything. It just works. And right now, uh, there is written should be visible and it waits for a few seconds until the uh, inbox get, appears. Cool. Today, Gmail is especially slow. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Uh, error messages. Selenite is, uh, provides you quite details, detailed error message in case if this fails. Oh, it starts again, okay. It's, it just starts the next test. So if, for example, you write should not have text error, then Selenite will report briefly. Uh, that element should not have text, but actually it has this text. It says which element uh, actually says all attributes of these elements. Quite, uh, quite useful. Uh, Selenite allows you, allows you to uh, very convenient way of, of working with collections. Uh, if one dollar returns one element, two dollars returns collection of elements, all matched elements. And you have plenty of convenient methods for, for working with collections. For example, you can write collection should have size. And Selenite will check that this collection is, has three elements. And again, it, it will wait a few seconds if needed. If this collection is uh, loaded with Ajax, for example, it will wait until this collection gets free elements. Another, another method is uh, to check that collection uh, has uh, some concrete texts, for example, and that again, 
setting that with will wait if at the beginning this collection has some other text. Uh, one more thing is that you can find elements in that collections, you can filter collections and so on. Actually, actually plenty of methods. And one more good thing about Selenite, uh, all its methods are like fluent, like a build a pattern, you know. You can put dot, one method, dot, another method, and so on. Many methods in one line. It allows you to write quite readable and concise tests. Uh, next good thing about Selenite, it can take automatically screenshots in case of any test failures. It's just good. It's just very useful. For example, if I run such a test, uh, some element should be visible, and actually it's not visible, then Selenite will take a screenshot, and you will, uh, look, uh, you will see this URL for this screenshot in your uh, error message. You do not need to configure anything. No reporting tools, no annotations, no anything. It, it's just there in error message. And one more good thing, if you run the same test in Jenkins, Selenai will automatically detect that this is Jenkins, thanks to some global variables in Jenkins, and will substitute this URL so, so that this URL is immediately clickable in Jenkins report. It's incredibly useful. It allows you to very quickly investigate why some uh, test in Jenkins failed. You just can open up uh, test results and click directly this link and view the screenshot. Pretty cool. Uh, so, next, next convenient method in Selenite is upload file. Actually, it's almost the same that in Selenium send keys, probably you know. But upload file is just readable. But what would you say about this method? Yeah, Selenite can upload multiple files at once. This is things that Selenium just cannot do. Of course, we had to, trick, we had to make some tricks for, to enable this behavior. Uh, Next thing, the, uh, which is quite a common problem, is how to download a file. People do create different tricks for this. This is a fun example from Glenn Smith blog. He wrote that, uh, wow, cool, I have learned how to download files in Selenium. This script uh, just helped me. And, uh, and uh, brought the script. And when I answered him, uh, man, do you know that with Selenite, you just can do it a little bit simpler. Look, like this. <laughs> he was surprised. <laughs> he said, wow, cool. <laughs> How can it be just simple? Yes, it can be simple like that. Uh, with Jenkins, why not? Sure. Uh, yeah, it works. It should work. Uh, one, one good thing about Selenite is uh, it, allowed, it allows you to write custom matchers. For example, if you uh, want to write dollar, some elements should have, and not text, but for example, should have CSS properties, property, and for example, Selenite doesn't provide such a matcher, you can create it by yourself. It's quite easy. You just uh, need to extend class condition and uh, implement method apply quite easy. It allows people to write quite, uh, quite readable tests in the, and, you know, kind of create domain-specific language for the tests. Uh, in Selenite, you can find elements by text. This is thing that Selenium cannot do directly. And actually, it's very convenient. So this line will, uh, will find element by entire text. And this line will find element by substring, subtext. And I personally think that this is a very good idea to search elements not by ID or CSS locator or XPath, by, by text. It's a good idea because it actually emulates real user behavior. This is how users find elements. Users do not find element by ID or class. Users just see text and colors. Uh, next. Next good thing about Selenite is it can search for parents or children. Now, Selenium can't find for children, you know, but for parents, Selenium can allow you to write like some elements dot parent, and it returns parent elements. Or 
dot closest and some locator, and Selenium will return the nearest parent that matches this locator. It's, no, and find is for finding tails. Uh, it's especially, especially useful, for example, if you want to find some row by its containing text and, uh, and, and later some, find some other elements from the same row from the table. It's especially convenient. Uh, Selenium also allows you using seasonal selectors. Uh, probably you know what it is. This, these are selectors that jQuery uses. Uh, and uh, Selenium, uh, Selenite uh, has its own profiler. At some moment, we, uh, we uh, found that we need uh, some logging, you know. And this profiler not just logs all actions, but it logs time. And it shows you what operations take most of time. It's pretty convenient. For example, thanks to this report, we have found that uh, all our tests uh, open at some URL twice, like you see. And it took most of time when running our tests. I believe it's quite useful to have profiler and see where, where you uh, use your time when running tests. Uh, yeah, every command you use in Selenite or Selenium. And one more thing that we discovered thanks to this profiler is uh, that most of time during tests run, about one third of time, was spent to one concrete Selenium method. Do you know what method is this? What is the slowest method in Selenium? Do you know? This is send keys. Method send keys. Uh, actually emulates user behavior. It emulates all these events, all letters one by one. It, it happens to be quite slow. Uh, and we wanted to, to optim optimize this, to optimize performance of our tests. And we created an option, which is still exp like experimental in Selenite. It is disabled by default. You can enable it, it but just some option, a command line option or programmatically, and what then happen when you enable, the, enable this option? Then method setValue or val setValue actually uses JavaScript to set value of elements. And it's, it's just much faster. It doesn't emulate all these events. It's, it's much, faster, much faster, but sometimes you still need these events. For example, if you need to test some auto-completion, for example. So what I like about Selenite, it, uh, it allows you to choose. You can choose. When you, when you want speed, you can run, just use method set value, which is fast. And when you uh, want to test out the completion or something like that, then you still can use Selenium built-in method send keys. You always have option. It's pretty good for me. And, and Selenite has uh, plenty of other functions, uh, like scroll to inner text and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Quite plenty of functions. And the good thing is actually that you don't need to remember all these things. The, the, the best thing about Selenite, as, as I personally like, is that you don't need to remember. It's designed uh, just to, uh, for auto-completion from IDE. Let me demonstrate it. For example, if we want to create method for Google search. So user can search, whatever. So we can just uh, open a browser with google.com. Uh -huh. So in the next, we can find, uh, probably you know that query element in Google is named Q. Just Q, like query. So the, my favorite thing, you do not remember, you don't need to remember anything. You just punct, put dot and start typing. In this example, I want to set value, but for example, I do not remember the name of a function. I do not want to read any documentation. 
So I just start typing, like Vala, for example, and IntelliJ or Eclipse, whatever, suggests you all possible options. Oh, set Vala, good. Good for me. Uh, and uh, remember, Selenoid provides you fluent methods. You can put dot again, and this time I want to press enter. Again, I don't remember the name of function. I start typing in there. Okay, IntelliJ provides you option press enter. Good, I like it. And the next thing is that I need to check results. There should be a collection of results, you know, so we use $2. Uh, probably you know that in Google search, this is this has ID IRS. Uh, and in this collection, I guess, we should have, do you want, do you know how many results Google returns? Uh, ten, 10, if I'm not mistaken. So we want to check that Google returns 10 results, and probably we want to check that the first result has some concrete text, for example, like this. So, as you can see, writing tests in Selenite is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty quick. You are just effective in writing tests. Let's look if it works. <laughs> hmm. It seems that it doesn't work. Ah, okay, actually it's, it's just slow. Yeah, it worked. You see, the test is green. So, I demonstrated that uh, uh, you do not need to remember anything. Just punct dot, start typing, and uh, your ID provides all possible, all possible methods. Uh, probably do you want to see uh, screenshots? Let's say I, that uh, the first result doesn't contain silly network, so let's write should have silly, should have text selenium conf. And let's run the test again. This time the test should fail and should take a screenshot of failing test automatically. Let's see. Uh, it waits up for four seconds because probably the first event gets this text after a few, se after a few seconds. So, and here we, we can see an uh, error report. So, element should have text selenium org. Actually, it hasn't. Actually, it has like this text, and it took a screenshot. And we can click right now this link, and we will see the real scr screenshot of a failing test. Pretty useful, what you think. Uh, Ah, probably I will I will run uh, one more demonstration about uh, of method zoom. Selenite provides method zoom. Uh, I will try to run it just for fun. So sometimes it's useful to zoom in or out uh, just for to to, to test uh, you know responsive design that uh, when zooming, some elements probably disappear or appear. So zoom function is quite useful for this. Uh, uh -huh, okay, I have one more demonstration uh, about how fast send keys is in different browsers. I will run this test. It will run first uh, 100 of send keys operations with Firefox and then with uh, Chrome, J just for fun. So, with Firefox, it starts uh, using send keys to fill uh, 100 of fields. And this is fast set value with JavaScript, much faster. Next one is Chrome. First of all, it uses default send keys operation, which is much slower in Chrome for some reason. You can see that in Chrome, it's, it's just slow. I don't know why. 
And the next we'll run the same test with fast set value. As you see, it's much faster. Uh, it, it made our tests about one third faster, but one uh, man reported that it made his tests about 100% faster because he runs his test on Selenium Grid or, I don't know, in cloud, and their send keys is especially slow. I don't know if it's true. I didn't try personally. Uh, so, uh, let's talk a, a little bit about your concern, concerns. Uh, many of people, when they see Selenite for the first time, are asking or are, have concerns. I will try to answer this. First of all, uh, Selenite is based on Selenium WebDriver, meaning that you still can use any of WebDriver uh, actions, methods, directly. You still can use anything that Selenium provides. So Selenite just adds more functions, useful functions, but if you need, you still uh, can use Selenium directly. And uh, many people always have concerns if they can provide their custom web driver. Because by default, Selenite uh, creates uh, the web driver by itself. Open method just creates web driver and later shut down it. Yes, you still can create your own custom instance of web driver. You can say, Selenite, uh, please use this web driver. It's easy. You still can parallelize tests because Selenite creates tests and holds them in, you know, trade local variable. You mean, it means that uh, separately for every trade, you can run se uh, uh, tests in parallel and Selenite will create one WebDriver instance per trade. It's safe. And uh, many people, when they look at my examples, uh, when they look at examples like this one, are afraid that this leads to spaghetti code. It doesn't allow you to write page objects and so on. Actually, it's not a problem. Selenite allows you writing page objects and even more better page objects, I believe. If you have time, I will, I will show some page objects with Selenite. Uh, and Selenite is not a testing framework. I personally like it very much. Selenite is not a framework, it's a library. What it means? Selenite doesn't, uh, you are not restricted. You are not restricted to any structure, to any annotations, to any super classes and so on. You just can use any of your favorite frameworks, JUnit, TestNG, whatever, and, and just uh, use convenient Selenite methods. Uh, actually, in GitHub, we have Selenite examples project that contains a lot of examples of using Selenite together with all these frameworks, JBehavior, Scala, and so on. And yes, Selenite can be used not only in Java, but in uh, other GVM languages too, in Scala, Groovy, and, and so on. Closure, even. Uh, and there is a few links for Selenite resources. First of all, Selenite.org. Uh, there is pretty cool, uh, pretty convenient uh, quick start video. You can, you can learn how to start writing Selenite tests. It's just 10 minutes, it's true. We create a project from scratch, may even start writing tests. Really, in 10 minutes, it's possible. So it means that with Selenite learning curve is just very, very short. You start writing tests very quickly. I like it. And some other articles in some blogs and magazines about Selenite. And the last one is just a funny video, Selenite Harmony Shake. Uh, and just in case, if you happen to be in Europe, welcome to Estonia, welcome to Tallinn. Tallinn is ancient, beautiful city. You will like it. Uh, thank you. If you have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, yeah? Okay, the question is, if I have already some extensive framework, existing framework, how can I integrate it with Selenite? It's absolutely possible. I guess uh, you just can uh, create, uh, use your framework to create your WebDriver instance. 
then just call Selenite method set web driver and uh, pass the web driver there. And you just can start using new functions in new tests, probably. Uh, start writing dollar, should have text in new test, and you can still have the old test in old, ma old manner, no problems. It, it's easy, it's no problem. Uh, more questions? Assertions, assertions, okay, good question, yeah. Uh, should have, uh, I have found that actually both JUnit and, and TestNG actually both throw an assertion exception that is in Java. And should have method throws also assertion error that is built in in Java. So no problems, all IDs and all frameworks catch it and show correctly. Uh, more questions, feel free. Yeah, please. Uh, okay, if you have different like times or timeouts for different actions. Yeah, it's also, also possible. Selenite also provides a, a separate method for waiting. Uh, I will probably show in Gmail. In my Gmail test, uh, default timeout is 10 seconds, but some concrete actions need longer timeout. And in this, way, in this case, uh, we use wait until method. So in addition to like should be visible, which, which waits for a default timeout, wait until method uh, can wait for custom timeout. You know, you provide here timeout. It's also possible, yeah? Actually, it's rarely needed, I think, but it's possible. Yeah, more questions? Two, two, two. Actually, I don't see, I don't see, uh, unfortunately, mo most of you. So, please, just say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, download and upload files. Yeah, all browsers can do it. Download uh, absolutely all, can, all browsers because downloading happens actually with, you know, HTTP protocol uh, without using browser. But about uploading, uh, as long as I know, PhantomJS cannot upload browsers, upload files, and probably HTML unit cannot do, you know, these restrictions, but all typical browsers can do it, yeah. Uh, more questions, feel free. Uh, I guess there is a question, yeah. Actually, I'm not sure. I cannot hear your question pretty well. <laughs> Does Selenite provide methods for running uh, JavaScript in tests? Uh, yes, it, it provides. Uh, again, just start typing Selenite dot and start typing JavaScript. Execute JavaScript, yeah. And actually, Selenite does use JavaScript for some of its methods. For example, for uploading multiple files, it heavily uses JavaScript. Are you asking if Selenet can wait for some JavaScript events? Uh, right now, no, we haven't such functionality, but we can add it. Feel free to send pull requests or feature requests. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just never need it, so I, I didn't know that this this feature is is, is required. <laughs> okay, feature request in GitHub is is, is very easy to send, yeah, probably. So more question here. Uh, I don't see. Yeah, please. Uh, what happens if library? So 
disk space. No, it's like not the problem of Selenite, I guess. <laughs> ah, does it continue to test? Yes, actually, sure. Selenite will report in logs that it failed to take screenshot, but it continues to, uh, with next test, yeah? Yeah, next. Oh, okay, do we have control where uh, this screenshot is stored? Yes, yeah, sure. Actually, Selenite has a class configuration. Oh. Configuration, I will show it, where all the default values are visible. For example, here are timeouts and all other things, and screenshots too. And uh, yeah, you can overwrite all, uh, any of these properties, either by set setting system property, either from command line or directly in your tests programmatically. You, change, you can just change this field and store a screenshot in another place, yeah? It's, it's possible, yeah? Everything is possible. And if something is not possible, please send pull request or feature, feature request. <laughs> I mean, feature request, yeah? You know, uh, okay, let me introduce uh, GitHub Selenite slash, uh, Selenite slash issues, and you can create new issues here. It's, it's very easy, yeah? Feel free. Uh, so, more questions? Uh, in Selenite, it's possible to write page objects. Uh, probably I will show you uh, GitHub Selen Selenite examples. Uh, so, there is a group of projects in, Selen uh, in GitHub Selenite examples. Do, 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 do. So this is, for example, a Google search. And here are different examples of page objects in different styles. Yeah, you know, Selenite straightforward. This is an uh, example that I've shown you without page objects. Mm -hmm. GitHub is also slow today, <laughs> not only Google. Uh, so, yeah, you can browse, browse all of these cases. This is example without page objects. Uh, and there, here are some other examples. For example, uh, Selenite page objects. This is how Google page may look like. Uh, I personally believe that it's a bad idea to create fields in page objects because actually page object uh, Page object's idea is to have behavior, like any other objects. Objects have behavior, not fields, not data, behavior. And behavior means methods. Google page has the only public method search for, with the only parameter and what we need to search. And how it does it, it's, it is its internal. It is implementation detail. In case of Selenite, you do not need to declare some fields, some annotations, some page factory, init elements. You just do not need all this boiler, boiler prolate. With Selenite, Selenite objects is just pure object without any boiler plate. Method search, search for, just find element, sets text, press enter. It's okay. And returns new, ele new page. And for creating new page, page objects, Selenite provides a very convenient method, open our page, both can return pages. And uh, search results page can look like, like this one, probably. Selenite is very flexible. You can do it in a million ways as, as, as you like it. For example, this is one, one option. The only method get results that returns a collection of elements. And you can check it. This method should have size, should have text, and so on. It's okay. This is page object. And we have here and examples of classic, classic Selenium page objects also. Yeah, these fields like. Uh, more questions? Yeah? Uh, 
when using uh, Selenite methods download, it actually does does not click the button and does not handle some download dialogs. This is good. It actually uh, downloads the element using HTTP method, HTTP protocol. Like uh, it's like a technical solution. It's it, it doesn't handle this UI. Thanks to this, this is stable. Yeah, this you need, you doesn't need to bother with native dialogs, alerts, and so on. Yeah, question. So you're, you're asking how exactly Selenite gets off uh, stale element exception. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks to should have methods. Uh, every time uh, when you write so, something like should be visible or should have text, for example. And when Selenite starts checking it, it does, it does this check like in loop. If it first tries to check uh, if this element has this text, but element has disappeared, it catches stale element exception, uh, waits a little bit and tries once more. Tries, tries once more, tries, tries once more, so up to four seconds. It doesn't uh, catch absolutely all stale element exceptions, by, but most of them, like 95% of them. In theory, stale element exception can still happen, but very rarely for very strange web applications. Uh, more questions? Aha, uh, uh -huh. okay, please. Uh, how do we configure profiler? Uh, right now, this profiler is actually pretty simple. It doesn't integrate with any uh, IDEs or something like that. It just prints out its results to the console. Console, like after running tests. Right now it's pretty simple. Probably we'll develop it uh, more, but right now it's simple, yeah. It doesn't integrate with anything. But it's good enough, actually. Right now we do not need anything more. Uh, yeah, question? Ah, okay. I haven't shown. Yeah, right. I haven't shown uh, how this test actually looks like. If you take a Selenite page object and Google test, yeah, actually, yeah, good question. So, uh, how how the test looks like? First of all, it opens a Google uh, page and uh, passes uh, to the open method. It passes a second optional parameter class of page object. If this is given, then open method actually returns this page object. It's already initialized with everything needed. You don't need to separately execute some page factor or anything else. Uh, and the next, you call the method of page object. It returns another page object. You can you call methods of this uh, another page object. That's it. Uh, actually, I am not a big fan of page objects because, as to me, we in this case. We have got about three times more lines of code without any benefit for me. The, the simple, straightforward Selenite test is about the same and the same readable as for me. Yeah? Uh, yes, I can put dot here and write more should have methods, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's it always changing, yeah? As as long as you wish. More questions? Uh yeah, please. Uh not yet. Actually it's an open uh, feature request. Somewhere in GitHub, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like uh, you know, the oldest feature request. Somebody wanted it also. Uh, that, uh, so right now, it's, it's not possible, yeah? But actually, I think that it's not a good idea. Yeah, are you asking about this? 
this is a suggestion. So I take a collection of elements and for each of these elements, check some condition. You mean this? I, I am an adapter. Actually, uh, I think that probably it's a, it's a bad idea. <laughs> but it's open discussion. Yeah? Uh, more questions? Sorry, we have time. OK. Please feel free to ask more questions from me. I'm here for the next two days. And I will, with pleasure, answer to all of your questions. Thank you for your attention.